Spirit of the Lord has been ministering something to me. I encourage you to listen intently because God, I know, is helping people with information that brings peace. Yet in the middle of it all, there's a storm we got to navigate. There's things we're looking at that need attention. They need understanding. And it is important. I had a, a very specific word uh, that I, I'm going to release here in a moment over the last week. And I've been processing with it, been praying about it because it's such a, a strange type of prophetic word to give, or I'm trying to navigate it. So maybe you can help me discern it in a moment. But if you would, please repost this, share this right away. I've got a lot to get into that's going to be very helpful. And the agenda that's going on, their agenda is being revealed. What's taking place, we recognize, is right in front of us. And I got to tell you right now, the Lord is not caught off guard, nor is he uh, concerned about how things are going? He simply wants his people to rise up and take territory, take the ground together with him. Now, I got to say, there, there is a major agenda going on, and I want to say this carefully, and I want to say it in a crafted manner that helps us walk into the fullness of what the Lord would have us see about what's coming. And it's important. Now, there's a lot of people talking about there may not indeed be a, a cycle to put more leaders into office this coming cycle in 2024 because of all the, the collisions that are right underway. There's many people that are concerned. We're going to begin to see challenges in um, the, the entirety of society by the time we even try to get new officials into a place of authority through our typical political cycles. Now, one thing I want to say to you so clearly is that with this agenda that's going on, there's much that needs to be said for the good of you and your family. And here's, here's the agenda that I sense going on. They've had something in motion ever since the early 1990s. And since the early 1990s, they've wanted to begin to control the masses. And they want to do it by limiting who's alive and who's not, all the way down to the elites. And this is something that they began to step forward and push out just recently uh, uh, in the last three years during the pandemic and those narratives we know about. But there's somebody that just came forward recently and they started talking about this and they worked for one of the main corporations that gave you the Mark of the Beast Precursor Practice Serum. <laughs> and it's something that we need to really consider when somebody's coming out and talking about such things. Now, just before I go into this, please, if you would, I encourage you to repost this, share this everywhere you can. And also, in addition to that, if you're a partner here, we want to say thank you to you for doing that. And if you want to become one, please simply go to josephz.com. And the reason I bring that out is because there's so many... Um, scammers and people faking that they're us. We will never solicit you. We will never message you and say, give to some special thing. Or if I use the term beloved in, in a message, that's not me. Okay. So I want to simply say to you, the only way we would ever have you give or stand with this ministry or this broadcast is to go to josephz.com or through the keyword give at the number on the screen. That's it. And uh, there's no other way to do it. You can do it through the, the app, download the Joseph Z app, but all the other avenues are not, um, not us. So if you would, please consider doing that. If you become a partner in the ministry, just so you know, we reach out to you and our team will contact you and we'll, they'll pray for you and they'll, they will really love on you and it'll be amazing. And uh, don't forget, we have books out, all that at josephz.com. They'll greatly help you. This one here is a prophetic book, Servants of Fire. Uh, it's a prophetic book, a now word for what's going on and how to pray through it. I, I'm telling you, it'll help you. Now, let me get into this prophetic word very quickly about what I sense the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I'm going to try to take this in stages today because there's something important with this. When a main figure comes out from a main entity and begins to talk about the agenda that they have, you can see it pretty plain and pretty clear. Let's, uh, let's show that if we could right here. I want to put it right on the board if we could right over here. I want you to see this today. And here is a, a clip of an individual talking about the game plan. Let's look at this real quick. I knew yes. that there were plans to reduce the population in the world, or at least to limit its its growth. That's definitely true. Kissinger wrote something, I think, in 1974. 1976. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really yeah. frightening plan that he says. He says, he says essentially that the overgrowth of people in what we might have called the overgrowth of people 
an overgrowth right. of people. Now, this is talking about in, in 90, I think he said seven, 1976, there was an article written by Kissinger that, that just basically starts to talk about the issue of the number of people that there are. And when you're looking at this, this is something that they're beginning to discuss. And this man here is from one of the top companies that gave us the Mark of the Beast precursor practice serum. Now he's stepping out, laying it all on the line and beginning to talk about the agenda behind it all. Let's continue. An economic and security threat to America. So we need to do That's something right. to limit that. I mean, how dare they think you're in charge of the world? But but that aside, in 1992, the governments of the world came together in Rio and they held the yeah. in Rio. Summit. They signed on the, the Earth line. Summit. The Earth Summit in Rio, they came together to basically form a pact or a ideology of how they're going to handle the coming generations. Let's continue. Essentially to say that by 2030, 2030. Um, the, the agenda uh, of the United Nations that no one voted for will limit the, um, what would be happening in your country. Uh, effectively, no, no more um, development, uh, right. no more private personal transport. You will own nothing and you will love it. You will own nothing and you will love it. We will own everything. We will control the world. I am a Bond villain, right? That is what uh, Klaus and and cronies and the wicked lizard overlords want us to uh, fall for and go down that road. And they're being very successful at it right now. Uh, the next thing they're going to push is this climate lie, and they're going to continue to do it. But just so you know, this man here is putting a lot on the line because he's one of them. He's one of them coming out and saying things, and uh, he, he's sharing some very detailed insights here. Let's just finish this thought up for a moment. Let's finish. Force you off the road right. through 15-minute cities, uh, excessive taxation, deliberately raising the price of gasoline, right. um, and so on and so forth. What well, our, gov our government's told sign us, people who weren't even born, up to a future in which they would be cold, that's right. hungry, unable to move around. And, yeah. and I, I inferred from what they were doing in 2020 and subsequently, in those commas, uh, free to be by the, That's right. by the people in, who decided they were in charge. They decided they were in charge. Now, we'll just leave that for now, but there's so much in this type of interview. When you see people that are in those circles, step out of those circles, out of the care of humanity, and they're starting to lay things on the line and saying, this is what's going on. Now, these are, are, are not just uh, conspiracy voices. These are actual players that are coming out and speaking out about what's going on in the world right now. So I had this, this, these clips sent to me from a, a, a good friend who researches these things and gets a hold of it. But let me say something to you about this. This is where it's going to get kind of serious. Um, my goodness, there, there's so much that we could get into today because I have a great sense that they're trying to push everybody to a point where they don't even know what to do next. And I feel this, this crisis fatigue and chaos going on. And yet in the middle of it, there's this turn and this avenue. I see the Spirit of the Lord breaking through, breaking against all this like water. So let me go over here and I'm going to talk about something that's, that's quite interesting. I'm going to go over to the Board of Vision, the Vision Board, the Holy Spirit board. Let's, let's go over here if we could. I want to talk about something today because I've had this impression for the last week. When you see the agenda they're bringing forward and you're seeing the way they're trying to push a narrative, I got to tell you something that I know the Spirit of the Lord hates the Antichrist agenda, wants nothing to do with it. And I got to tell you, you are more powerful than you realize. You have more authority than you realize. But I need you to hear something very clearly, okay? This is really important that you hear this today. The Lord wants us to rise up and sometimes to be forewarned is to be forearmed. You know, they're talking about this um, over in the Middle East. They're talking about the line, it's that, that grouping of, of houses and living accommodations that they're already building. The line is basically this very, uh, when you look at something according to the size of a nation, it's a very slim city, narrow, and it goes a very long distance. And there's going to be millions of people living in this over in the Middle East. And when you're looking at how they're operating, you're seeing this trend begin to happen. You're seeing the notion of 15-minute, what? Cities. 
And why is that such a big issue? Why are 15 minute cities such a big issue? Well, part of the reason they're such a big issue is they want to stop autonomy or transportation. Why? For the purpose of control. Now, part of this is going to get into the agenda of climate. As I've said before, and I sense clearly, they're going to try to do lockdowns as it relates to this topic here. Now, one of the things that I have heard in my spirit, and this is, okay, <laughs> I really hesitate to say this part because I know people are going to say, oh my goodness, here we go, you know. <laughs> There's enough goofy prophetic people out there for broadcast. You know the difference with, with our ministry and some of the other ministries or the calling is, I never wanted to do it. I never wanted to prophesy and broadcast and say all the stuff that God's asking me to say. Sometimes I really sense that. I wanted to be a Bible scholar. I wanted to teach the Word. I wanted to be Rick Renner. <laughs> I wanted to do all those things. And the Lord's like, Joseph, I want you to say it. And so I start saying things and people just are like, oh my gosh. And so when you see people that are goofy prophetic people, you're seeing all the weird stuff people put out in the woo and the tickle me Jesus camp. And you know, the Lord's just saying something here and it actually drives me bananas okay but i want to say this to you i have a really wild word to give you today please discern it please pray about it and i'm going to walk through it right now <laughs> oh help me jesus uh, i could just hear some of my friends they're gonna be like really bro that's that's great here it comes i saw this and i'm just being obedient to the lord so i'm going to share this this is going to become um it's a word I sense that's going to come out. It's either going to be through a, a system of control or they're going to use this word in a way that it is a similar narrative to the UFO narrative. We've been talking about the UFO narrative for about four years. Um, one of the words I see, and I don't know where this starts and stops, so I'm going to begin to kind of navigate with you this morning. Please help me discern this. But I don't know why. Similar to the word I saw when uh, the Jan 6 thing took place, I saw the word about two weeks beforehand, I saw the word Viking, a Viking. I saw this Viking and I'm telling Heather about it. And I'm, I, I was afraid to even say it. I'm like, why would I say, watch the Viking? And then, then I saw the day of tears. And when that happened, there was a Viking and we know the narrative with that. I don't know why I see in part sometimes. So I'm going to do this today. I've seen this for a week. I'll submit it to you. Please discern and pray. Here's the watchword I'm seeing, and I, I don't know how soon this is or if it's right around the corner, but I believe just like UFOs, the climate narrative, all the stuff they're talking about, there's going to be a heightened word or a sensitivity to this word. Yep, I said it. Zombies. <laughs> I could just hear some of my ministry friends right now. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, but I see things, and even if it doesn't make sense to me or logic, there's this word I see, and I don't know where this starts or stops. I don't know if this is going to become more of a trend. I don't know if they're going to begin to do a, a, uh, a pseudo-like like statement about it where they begin to say, yep, it's beginning to happen. Uh, there's things happening. You're going to hear uh, rumors of outbreaks. There's something about this that I sense coming. And again, this will have to do with this. I, I don't know, man. The, I'll just put it here. You know, when you begin to see that they're finding labs... in uh, the great state where Newsom is. And boy, he's done a just a, a bang-up job there, hasn't he? And, you know, you're looking at how these guys are doing things. I believe that anything is on the table right now. And when I say this, this is a mechanism for both uh, control and it's a mechanism for fear. And it could be that it's just a theme they push out. It could be a marketing campaign. It could be literal. Uh, it could be literal where they begin to say, oh my goodness, we never would have thought this, but something has happened and there's a crazy outbreak of something and things are going on. 
I got to tell you this, I hesitated for a week to talk about this because when you see things like this, um, you see words like this and you say, okay, where does this start and stop? Does this mean animals? Does this mean other things? Does this mean technology? Could this be a tech? Could this be a word for tech? Where they're talking about uh, devices being taken over. You know what I'm saying? Where they begin to do this and I believe this could, okay, interesting. This could involve AI, where things get a life of their own. They get a life of their own. There's something going on with this. So, you know, could it be a literal thing? I just got to tell you, this word has been on me for a week, very powerfully. And I, I pray about these things because when I see crazy stuff like that, I start to ask the question, what are we actually looking at? What are we talking about now? It could be it just as straight up as literal as the movies and they're trying to bring something forward and it is what it is. But I got to tell you, there's a word around this and this is going to be a word to watch for more and more as this begins to happen. Um, I'm going to begin to go into detail more and more. <laughs> People are commenting on the broadcast. Sharpen your chainsaw. Get ready. Ah, <laughs> Lord, has it come to this, Lord? But I just got to tell you, there's so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we are. It's come to this, ladies and gentlemen, live on the broadcast. You heard it here. Zombies. The zombie apocalypse is coming. No, I'm not saying that at all, ladies and gentlemen. But I've got to tell you, there is something about this word. And I don't, I don't know where it starts and stops. I just believe this word is going to get more trendy than it's been, not just in cinema. I believe it's going to be a watchword in the culture. I think this word is going to get more and more traction, maybe as it relates to technology, artificial intelligence, the hacking narratives, all of these issues going on. It could even have a, a form of... Um, Something to do with a medical scenario. And even though they'll begin to, wow, as I'm looking at this right now, I hear this, this could relate to war. It could induce it. Why is that? Why am I sensing that? It could induce war. Why would it induce war? As an excuse, they could say this is running away. We can't control X, Y, or Z. We can't control this technology. We can't control what's going on in the sea and the sky and under the water. We can't control it. It's like a, it's like a zombie that's happening. There's a zombie tech that's taking over and we can't stop it. Something's coming and we can't stop it. It has to do with this. That way they can not take the blame for what they're allowing to happen. But there is this scenario with this word attached to it. I don't know if they'll call it a zombie tech. I don't know if it's going to be a zombie, uh, scenario with with medical i don't know if it's gonna i just sense this so we need to pray when you see this you know there's a sign in it and it's something we need to pay attention to and i believe that this is right around the corner and sometimes you know if you've watched this broadcast when i prophesy things or i see things have a prophetic unction people are like that's not prophecy everybody has their idea of what prophecy is you know it says we know in part and prophesy in part Prophecy means to foretell and foretell. It means to show the future. It means to see things. It means to extemporaneously preach. It means many things. But here's the, the bottom line, is I do believe sometimes we see this stuff, and it is a, a month, six months, a year or two out, and then these things begin to happen. So what I'm looking at right now, and I'm sensing powerfully, is that there's also going to be a pulling back of the veil. This type of narrative wants to get people where they're, you know, in the lockdown fear state and they begin to not have transportation and people are just stuck in basically uh, digital prisons. Let's, um, let me talk to you about one other thing very quickly here. One other thing. When I'm, when I'm talking about this process, let me say this. There's a process I sense also that there will be another play of hand that's going on for 45. 445. I don't know if you know this, but because of the way the other side has come at him, they've opened the door where now 
he, Trump, actually 45, and his legal team can make their case because of the way they've been attacked and the way it's been brought forward. They can actually make their case now about what happened in 2020. So we can talk about that. Let's show that other clip very quickly here. This is a, a, a hearing and this is an argument that's coming out. You need to see this clip. Check this out. And it's a great mistake by Jack Smith that he's done that. Absolutely great. See, the thing is, think about um, uh, Edward Snowden and all the information he had. Wow. Think about the fact that our military, our Department of Defense Space Force, mm -mm. if you think Listen that carefully. they don't have the actual real results. Let's stop it. From if you think they don't have the actual real results from the last go around, now what she's saying, and I'll let her finish in a moment, what she's saying here is that what has taken place is that the way Smith has come at this, he's opened up the floodgates now for himself, meaning he came at this one way, but the way they're doing it now, the other side, meaning Trump's side, can give full disclosure on what they know and the jury, the judge, according to what I understand so far, or what is being said, they have to listen to it. So, and she's making the case, if you think they don't have all the proof and the evidence, if they just have a moment to lay it out in front of people that have to listen, she said, you're, you're mistaken. So let's just finish what she's talking about here. I think it's important. Um, then Talked about the last yourself. cycle. Yourself. You're kidding yourself is what she said. If you think they don't have, if you think they don't have the information that they want to present at the right time, you're kidding yourself. In other words, there is data and reams of things that are already behind the, the scene that in the way they've done this 245 and the way they're trying to put him away, they're going to actually open up the floodgates to give full disclosure to what really happened behind the veil. That's the argument. We'll see where it goes, but that's the argument. That's a very interesting thing. Is there any more of this here? Is that it? Okay. I want to say to you <clears throat> as we're looking at this now, I have a great sense about something and I'm going to share more about this. Let me go to the board here one more time because this is really vital. I have a great sense about this, and if we can begin to see a turn, I'm going to get rid of this Middle Eastern line. If we can begin to see a turn in the next year, then I believe we can hold off some of the nefarious plans of these characters. But the issue at hand and what we're actually going to be dealing with is that there is a coming year that many have talked about, and it is this year here. Now, to accomplish agenda, there is a actual agenda. You know, I should, uh, I should get my buddy Todd back on here. We should talk about this. But um, when you're looking at this, the actual agenda that we're looking at here is to, I'll just say it this way, knock off a whole lot of um, life by this year. That's one of the agendas they're talking about. So all the things I just laid, laid out are playing into it. And this year here is the year that they want to have everybody in a digital cage. Now, when you've got a whole culture that doesn't even know what they really are by identification, they don't know what they're about, they don't know where they're at, and everybody's down the whole rabbit trail of digital media so far, that this is really on track. Meaning, when they begin to do the central bank uh, digital currency narrative, uh, the programmable currency, they get people into this place, they will absolutely be under the thumb. They'll begin to put down these, you know, these 15 minute cities, no more transportation the way it once was. Everybody will be raised into a new culture of obedience and subservience to this ideology. And this really does set up an antichrist agenda. It may not be the antichrist by this time, but I got to tell you, the antichrist agenda or the Antichrist system will be in place if all things go according to plan. Now, there is a, a unique story, and every now and then we have to talk about this because it's a real thing. So on the date, April 13th, 
2029, it's a Friday, believe it or not, there is this narrative that many people, some people prophesied about. I know there's a prophetic words out there about it, but there's this asteroid called Apophis. And every now and then the Lord spoke to me something about this, that this was something that was a splash. And then it was going to be a quiet thing. It would go dormant and then it was going to get loud again. I believe this asteroid scenario that they're preparing us for, I believe that this asteroid, Apophis, or one like it, is really going to begin to get in the news coming closer and closer to this year in this time frame. April 13th, it's going to do a close near-Earth flyby. I'll just put an N-E flyby. Okay? This is something they're talking about, and NASA and all of them are saying, oh, don't worry about it. This is no big deal. You don't have to be concerned with what's happening here. But I've got to tell you, this actually gets my attention. I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord. I'm not saying this is what's going on. But there is something going on with this, and there's been people who've had visions about it. Many people have discussed it. Um, I just know that when I saw this and I first heard about it, it really got my attention, and I've prayed about it. And I've got to tell you, with this picture here, there's not nothing. There's not nothing. And you say, what is this? Well, Apophis is the god of chaos. It's an ancient Egyptian uh, name. It's the god of chaos, whatnot. And Apophis, this, this asteroid that's flown by already, um, will either fly by under our satellites in April 13th, 2029, or it will indeed hit, strike Earth. And if it does, it very well could be the prophecy in the Bible talking about Wormwood, that mountain, that flaming mountain coming through the atmosphere, striking the ocean, striking the land, all that's going on with it. This is a very serious scenario, and this could be an intervention by this time. It could be that the global elites already know about this, and that's why they're building underground things. That's where a lot of our defense budgets go to. That's why we're trillions and trillions of dollars into debt, and these things are going to black book projects, whatever. They're off the books projects because they see these things coming, they know it, and they don't want society to know, so they're going to let everybody uh, identify as whatever and run this way and run that way, and everybody goes down the whole road, and suddenly you begin to recognize this. Now, when you see all these things, listen to me. Boy, I put some doozies on the board today. Uh, when you see these kind of things, you've got to recognize that although in the middle of it all, they're trying to push this, uh, this UFO agenda, everything with that that we've talked about so much on this broadcast for years, and now suddenly it's here again. I'll just put this little, since it's a colorful board today, I'll put UFO agenda, UAP agenda. All this stuff is coming, and you say, my goodness, how can it be coming? Why is it coming? Why is it out there? Well, first of all, a lot of it's a symphony of distraction. A lot of it is real. And there's so much we've got to recognize, and we need to start arming ourselves with a mindset that says, I will not be deceived or shaken by these things that are coming upon the earth. Now, Revelation, excuse me, Luke chapter 21 talks about things that will come upon the earth and men's hearts will fail them for the sight or the measurable understanding that's beginning to come under uh, onto the earth. And it's, it's really strong stuff. So when we're looking at what the Lord is saying, I believe he's saying very clearly, we've got to begin to rise up and bring order to our minds and our hearts. And we're looking at this picture. So yeah, there's things coming 2029. You can measure this. You can actually look it up. It's something that is going to come right across the center of America. It's going to go across uh, Russia, across the ocean and across America, the asteroid Apophis. And some are concerned that even in NASA, they're saying it could actually strike. And if it did, that'd be pretty serious. This UFO narrative is a distress action from what's going on in um, uh, a lot of the political stuff, but yet there's a reality to it, and you're seeing where this is all taking place. The whole system is a sy system of deception. They're trying to push people into a place of fear and control. And I got to tell you, I got good news for you in all this. Let's talk here. Let me say this to you right now. The Lord Jesus always provides a way for you to rise above it. The answer is the same. Jesus is Lord. You don't have to be afraid of this stuff. You don't get to look at it with fear, trepidation, shrinking back and falling to the wayside. I want to say to you right now, the spirit of the Lord is causing us to rise up. This is the hour where we preach the gospel like never before. We take more territory. We take ground and we begin to stand in the middle of a present evil 
age. Jesus has made a way for you to live, move, and have your being in the middle of it all. And I got to tell you right now, there is no way you need to fall into fear with any of this. None of it. Because at the, the latter end of this, we end up winning, overcoming, and conquering the world with Jesus. That's the way that this goes. So we've got to stay in faith. We've got to rise up. I saw something in the Word of God uh, early this morning that really got my attention. And I believe the Lord is wanting to have people live, move, and have their being in Him in such a way that we begin to realize that God is calling us to, to stand up and, and to bring a great uh, a, a rising to what he's calling us to do. And here's, here's the thing I wanted to get into just very, very quickly today. There was a time when Samuel, the prophet, was overseeing Israel. He was really acting as a judge, the prophet. He was standing over Israel. And as he was doing this, he began, to, he began to bring an offering and whatnot before the Lord. And as he was doing this, it begins to talk about how the Philistines came against, and they began to come against the territory. And when this happened, this is where it is. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, I want you to see something. Samuel was bringing an offering before the Lord, and something mighty happened. And the Lord began to speak to me about this. During this season, the Israelites wanted a king. And Samuel was the prophet who was a direct line of communication from God to the people. And in this moment, in this moment, people are asking if they can purchase this shirt. Yeah, you can get this at josephz.com. You can get this shirt, many other shirts like it. Um, and Samuel, it says here in verse seven, it says, now when the Philistines heard the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, I'm in 1 Samuel chapter seven, it says something powerful here. Um, I want you to see this right now. Let's go ahead and, if we could. Yeah. I want to go to verse 7 on the board if we could. I want to show you this. I want you to read this with me. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord. Uh, nope, that's First Samuel chapter 7. Chapter 7. 1 Samuel chapter 7, and I want to go to verse uh, 7. Thank you. Thank you, Elia. Let's go here. Now, when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel, is what it's saying here. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. Verse 8. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, for he may save us from the hand of the Philistines, their opponents, their persecutors, these, these people. Let's keep going. Verse 9. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Verse 10. Now, as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, check this out. Now, this is something I, you know, you read the Bible and then you see something and it gets your attention. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. Now, here's the word of the Lord. Are you hearing me? This is the job of the red church right now. Somebody needs to shout out right now on the broadcast. We're going red, okay? Going red in the blood of Jesus. Now, when you see this, it says they drew near to the battle, to battle against Israel. Now, Samuel was in this place of doing an offering. He was standing up as a prophet. It would seem almost contradictory that there was a battle coming against them. They're about to be assaulted by their enemies. And what happens? Samuel's there giving an offering up to the Lord, praying for the nation. But look, it says, they gathered, they drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord thundered. What? Thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. Now, this is interesting. When they were overcome, Josephus, the early church historian, says it this way. He said that lightning was given. It was lightning and thunder, and it shook them physically, and it shook their weapons out of their hands, even to the point it was possible that the ground opened up and swallowed some of them. Now, that's not in Scripture, but that's what one or two commentators and historians elude to, is that this was such a severe thundering. It says the Lord thundered from heaven at them, shook the Philistines to the point their weapons fell out of their hands and the ground opened up and maybe even devoured some of them. Now that's that's just speculation and but yet it is it is a little bit of 
historical norms that Josephus talked about when the Lord would thunder or do things. Here's my point. I saw this and the Spirit of God began to speak through this saying, do not think you are outnumbered. Do not think that I cannot rescue. Do not think I can save by many or few. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, pray, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. And today, those kind of prayers are a local call because Jesus lives in you, the hope of glory. Now, this is a mighty thing. Let's take a look here. Just again, I want to say this to you today clearly. God is not in any way wanting to bring confusion to you or terror or fear. I share these things. Why? So we can pray. And we're going to do that right now. When I share things that are just wild and off the chain of people like, are you kidding me? I can't believe some of the things you say. Well, you know what? I'm doing my job and maybe you should do yours too. And let's just begin to pray and intercede. So right now in the name of Jesus, Today, live on this broadcast, we begin to pray for the United States of America. We lift up every nation of the world that begins to stand for righteousness. We lift up leaders. We begin to oppose, in Jesus' name, this Antichrist agenda that's trying to come to our nation, that's trying to come to the nations, whatever nation you're watching from. I begin to release the power of God over God's people. We release strength. We release life. We release victory. And we are not intimidated by this demon thug spirit that wants to push back against the children of righteousness. I speak peace. I speak joy. I speak authority. I speak raw spiritual horsepower over you in Jesus' name that you would stand up in the middle of a perverse and wicked generation in Jesus' name. I declare your children will hear the good news. Your children will rise up. I declare one more round for this nation in Jesus' name. We stand right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we rise up with the high call of God. We rise up with the high call of God, our covenant. We plead the blood of the Lamb. We say we're going red in Jesus today, and we stand for the truth and the victory of Almighty God. I say over your mind today, no fear, no anxiety, nothing but life and joy in your heart in Jesus' name. You know, the things I've shared with you, you need to pray about. You need to be seeking God over. And this is why we have that campaign. This is why God's spoken to us about a million for a billion. What do I mean by a million for a billion? A million for a billion is I believe God has called us to raise up a world broadcast center so we can rise up and begin to call out to the culture through media, through short form, long form, call people out of darkness into the light and begin to declare and reach them through media like never before. And in, what do I mean by a million for a billion? A million clear-eyed, clear-minded reformers is what it will take to win converts to the level of at least a billion. Meaning I need to raise up. My part is to help raise up one million clear-eyed, clear-minded, prophetic reformers, mature believers, disciples of Jesus that will stand up and go to the culture and win a billion. Win a billion. Get them in the kingdom. Get them in the kingdom. It's prophetic, it's evangelistic, it's discipleship, it's apostolic, it's pastoral, it's all of it. A million. And I'm believing God this way, that we're going to raise that up. So I'm believing God for a world broadcast center. And that might be a small place, a big place, and we are in the middle of seeking that right now. What do I mean by a world broadcast center? It will be a place where we can broadcast all over the world. Man, it could be local but global. Do you know what I'm saying? Locally broadcasted, uh, but, but global reach. Local and global. That the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you. And I believe God's doing that. And I'll tell you what, we're, we're believing God for a million, for a billion, that we're going to stand up and do this. I encourage you, if you are a partner in this ministry, thank you. We so appreciate you. We're going after it. we got some pretty magnificent things that we might be talking about by the end of this week, if not the, the following week. Um, and we have a lot to get into that I think is going to help you and help many people. But if you want to become a partner, join the fight with us, become part of the partner family, go to josephz.com. Go to josephz.com. Let's go after a million so we can raise up a million to, to win a billion. You go to josephz.com. You can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. Also, on the screen, we'll put up the text to join number. This text to join number, I want you to see this. 
If you have a device, when we put up text to join, 719-719-3637, uh, 719-719-3637 is the number I want to get you to, to screenshot. If you see this number right here, screenshot this. I want you to text this number. The reason being is this is our announcement number. This is the way we're going to communicate with you. This is how we're going to tell you what's going on and what's happening next. You're going to hear from this number very soon, especially if we get this update that's coming this week or the following. We're doing our, uh, our best to get this accomplished. And what do I mean by update? We're believing God's going to give us territory to really broadcast like never before. So be praying with us, agreeing with us, and we'll begin to, to tell you about it through this and this broadcast right here. Screenshot this right now and text the number join and get a hold of this because this is the way we'll send you live links, things that are happening, or if we're coming to your area, we'll text you to your phone and we'll tell you. We're not going to hit you every day with this number, but this is a great way for you to stay in touch with the ministry. So screenshot it if you're not sure, and then use the number, text it, join up, and you say, well, what information do I got to give? It might ask you your birth date, all that stuff. You can put whatever numbers you want in there. Just please get in, a, get in touch with us this way so we can communicate with you. If you want to be a partner here, I got to tell you, it is so powerful powerful, uh, your partnership. You'll hear from us. Our team will reach out to you. They'll pray with you. It's going to be great. And I believe God's going to do a mighty, mighty thing. People are asking about the United Kingdom and numbers all over the world. We're working on all that. We're getting better at this all the time. Please also, at this time, God's had me write these books, Breaking Hell's Economy, Servants of Fire. You can get these at josephz.com. They are a now prophetic word for exactly what I'm talking about, how to drive through the culture and win. And I'm telling you, God has given a now word for you to live. You want to buy these for you, other people. The reason is I don't write books just to sell books or make books. I write books because I believe the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to me something that will be very helpful. And the testimonies coming in from the books are, are tremendous. So praise God. Jesus is Lord. I got so much more to get into this week. I hope you'll join me right here, 7 a.m. live, Colorado time. We got a lot more to get into. And I'll be praying about that crazy word about the word I saw, zombie or zombies. We need to pray about that because I believe it has to do with more than one thing. Sometimes God shares things in part, and then you see the fulfillment of it in a unique way later. So let's be praying. Jesus is Lord. On a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. And don't forget this. If nobody's told you today, we love you and Jesus loves you. He is the voice of God, and we're going red in the blood of the Lamb. We've got some exciting things to tell you about throughout this week. Be praying for us. We're right in the middle of some very, very wonderful things, and I'll be sharing more about that hopefully this week with you. God bless you. Repost this. Check out these announcements, and I'll see you soon. Well, I am so thankful you're here. You know, this ministry is expanding. We are growing and it is to the glory of the Lord. And I wanna say something to every partner here, whether you are a recent partner or been with us a very long time. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. Partners, because of you, we could not do what we're doing. We're taking territory, we're building new media all the time, we're advancing, we're putting out written materials and giving away content all over the world. And we're so grateful to you for it. You send us on journeys that cost nothing to the people who are bringing us in. And I want to say simply to you, thank you. Now, if you want to join our partner family and you're watching, I encourage you to do so today. You go to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you join our partner family, you're going to hear from us. We will love on you. We will pray for you. We will stand with you over all your dreams and your visions. And I'm telling you what, Heather and I, we constantly are praying for our partners. So please consider, if you're on the fence, join the partner family and let's do this thing together, both in prayer and generosity. We believe that God is going to make all your purpose, destiny, and dreams come to pass. We're standing with you for it. So thank you for considering partnering with us today. Again, you go to josephz.com. We have a lot of territory to take and we wanna do it together. God bless you. Remember, on a bad day, you're the best there is and you are called to be and shine the light in darkness. I'll see you again next time right here as we continue bringing a now word of the Lord. God bless you.